So first, common malformation is a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia denotes herniation of abdominal content into thoracic cavity through an abnormal opening in diaphragm. So there is a postrolateral foramen of Bogdalek or anterolateral foramen of Morgagni. So congenital anomaly, there is a congenital heart disease, esophageal or duodenal atresia, neural tube defect, renal anomalies, and chromo chromosomal trisomy are present in 20 to 30 percent case. Diaphragmatic hernia present in 1 into 2000 birth and most of them are on left side, 70 to 85 percent. Bilateral hernia in 5 percent, while isolated hernia about foramen of Morgagni is a rare and less than 2 percent. And clinical presentation depends on the size of hernial sac severity of pulmonary hypoplasia and the presence of associated anomalies. A typical case present in an early neonatal period with progressive respiratory distress, scaphoid abdomen and the decreased breath sound and the presence of bowel sound on an affected side with a swift of mediastinum on the opposite side. The chest may unusually prominent or bulging on affected side and maternal polyhydrobnose is common due to impaired absorption of amniotic fluid. The diagnosis of diaphragmatic hernia may be diagnosed prenatally on USG by 16 to 20 gestational weeks and the postnatal diagnosis may be confirmed on X-ray chest showing presence of air-filled bowel loops on a left side of chest and the shift of mediastinum opposite side and the absence of copula of diaphragm on an affected side and the lateral view may demonstrate the intestine passing through the posterior portion of diaphragm. How management of congenital diaphragmatic hernia? Management of diaphragmatic hernia is essentially surgical, involving reduction of herniated segment and repair of diaphragmatic defect as early as possible after preoperative stabilization. Other important diaphragmatic abnormality are as follows. Eventration of diaphragm. Congenital hypoplasia of diaphragmatic muscle leading to elevation of entire hemidiaphragm or more commonly the anterior crux into thoracic cavity and it is more common on a left side. Eventration of diaphragm. Hiatus hernia. Hiatus hernia denotes sliding or herniation of gastroesophageal junction or a portion of the stomach through normal or pestulous esophageal opening in diaphragm and usually associated with severe gastroesophageal reflux, GER, and treatment is directed towards GER, not for the hernia. Second important anomaly, there is a need pertaining to nose, nasal disorders. The first and foremost, coenal atresia. Coenal atresia is a commonest congenital malformation of nose. There is 1 into 7,000 live birth characterized by unilateral or bilateral. It is body 90% or membranous septum and between the nose and the pharynx. Other congenital anomaly are associated in 50% case, there is a Charles syndrome. What is Charles? There's a, it includes coloma, 
iris, heart anomaly, atresia coena, retarded growth, renal anomalies, and genital and ear abnormality. Clinically, unilateral atresia is often asymptomatic except unilateral nasal discharge and stuffiness. However, bilateral co coenal atresia present at birth with the breathing difficulties and cyanosis and especially during feeding as the newborn are obligatory worse breathers. How to diagnose coenal atresia? Diagnosis is suggested by failure to pass a catheter beyond the posterior nares and the spatula test for a unilateral lesion. Absence of steam vapor on an affected side when the signing steel tongue depression is kept in the front of nares and lateral X-ray skull with a contrast medium instilled in the nostrils and computerized CT scan and MRI study are recommended in every case to delineate bony anatomy before surgery of coenal atresia. The treatment of coenal atresia, there is a bilateral coenal atresia, needs immediate surgery in a neonatal period with perforation and the dilatation of membranous lesion or intranasal resection with stenting in a bony lesion after initial stabilization with oral airway and tracheostomy. Correction of unilateral atresia may be deferred for many years. The next year disorders, that the ear congenital anomaly. Congenital malformation of ear include external ear abnormalities. There is a pre-auricular pits or tags or microtia. External auditory canal atresia or stenosis. And ossicular malformation leading to conductive deafness. And congenital perilymphatic fistula leading to sensory neural deafness. Malformation of external or a middle ear, though largely benign and cosmetic, are frequently associated with inner ear defect or other congenital anomaly. So renal malformation and chromosomal syndrome, hence complete auditory or a renal evaluation is necessary in all children with ear abnormality along with cosmetic and functional interventions. So whenever there is a ear abnormality, exude renal anomaly and also complete examination of ordinary canal. Then congenital lung malformation. Congenital lung malformation are a rare but important cause of respiratory morbidity in children with outcome depend on the size of lesion and the secondary changes. There is infection and family. Failure to recognize death may lead to inappropriate delay in appropriate management. So which are the congenital malformation? Pulmonary agenesis or pulmonary aplasia. There is a complete absence of lung. Pulmonary agenesis may be a autosomal recessive and associated with other malformation. There is a vectoral sequence. Clinically, bilateral lung agenesis is incompatible with life and it is confirmed by CT scan and MRI. And pulmonary hypoplasia denotes decrease in the number of alveoli and airway generation. Then congenital cystic adenomatous malformation, there is CCAM. It denotes presence of hematomas of cystic lung tissue mixed with 
normal lung tissue due to maldevelopment of terminal bronchiolar structure in a early gestation. Clinically, most of these cases present in early infancy with the respiratory distress, recurrent respiratory infection, and pneumothorax, often confused with diaphragmatic hernia or a lung abscess. Diagnosis of CCAM on a CT scan and the prenatal diagnosis possible by ultrasonography. And treatment of the CCAM, it is surgical. Pulmonary sequestration, another anomaly. Congenital anomaly of the lung development in which the part of the lung tissue does not connect to the bronchus and receive its blood supply for a systemic arteries. There is pulmonary sequestration. Sequestration may be intrapulmonary. It is more common and also extrapulmonary depending on its location. An associated anomaly with CCAM and diaphragmatic hernia are not uncommon with pulmonary sequestration. Clinically, this pulmonary sequestration is asymptomatic, but some cases present with secondary infection, abscess, and hematocysis. And the pulmonary sequestration diagnosis confirmed by CT chest and the contrast study. And the treatment is surgical through the coil embolization of feeding artery may be successful in selected case of the CCEM. Bronchogenic cyst. Bronchogenic cyst denotes abnormal budding of tracheal diverticulum of the foregut and more common on a right near the midline. And the bronchogenic cyst, it is confirmed by CAT scan, CT scan and MRI. And the choice of therapy in case of bronchogenic cyst is surgical excision. Then another abnormality is there is a cleft lip, cleft palate. Cleft lip and cleft palate are two distinct but a closely related developmental malformation with impaired development or a fusion of facial process. Incidence of cleft lip with or without palate and a cleft palate alone is about 1 into 750 and 1 into 2,500 2, children respectively. Former being more common in males. So cleft lip with or without palate 1 into 75, which is more common in male. While this cleft palate alone, it is 1 into 2,500 children. Cleft lip is usually isolated defect, while cleft palate may be alone or with other congenital malformation. There is a first brinkial R defect or a chromosomal abnormalities. Etiology of the cleft lip, cleft palate. It is probably multifactorial with a genetic basis and environmental factor. There is a maternal drug exposure. And familial tendency are known with a recurrence risk is 3 to 4% and 10 to 15% in the sibling and offspring of the index case, respectively. Clinically, cleft lip may be unilateral or bilateral and effect on function. So this cleft lip and palate, there's a problem, there's a feeding difficulties, recurrent aspiration, deafness, dental malocclusion, and dental caries, speech defect, due to misarticulation and hypo or hyper nasality and the nasal escape. How to manage cleft lip cleft palate? There is a teamwork involving surgeon, dentist, pediatrician, and speech therapist. 
the treatment of cleft lip is mainly surgical while the cleft palate it required special medical care till these may be repaired so medical management of cleft palate there is a feeding speech hearing and dental mulch occlusion management and the cleft lip is usually operated at 3 to 6 month there is a rule of 10 there is a age 10 week weight 10 pound and hemoglobin 10 gram so cleft lift operated at 3 to 6 month with z plasty to revision surgery may be needed at 5 to 6 years and rhinoplasty during adolescence so timing of cleft palate repair has to be individualized according to the size of the defect do most of the cases are operated at so clap pellet at the age of 9 to 12 month to allow normal speech development the good post operative care is critical for surgical success and a wound infection with reopening of defect and aspiration are a common complication of surgery of clap pellet another malformation there is a peer robin syndrome peer robin syndrome there is an important orofacial malformation with a mandibular hypoplasia characterized by triad of three thing there is micrognathia or retrognathia macroglossia and glossoptosis so is a triad of three thing peer robin micrognathia macroglossia and glossoptosis these cases must be managed in a prone position to prevent posterior displacement of tongue and that may obstruct airway severe case of peer robin may require suturing of tongue with a alveolar margin and tracheostomy till mandibular growth is adequate third important malformation is teacher's colin syndrome teacher's colin syndrome there is a mandibular facial dysostosis is a rare facial dysphagism with a triangular face receding chin and blind fistula between ear and the angle of the mouth and downward slant eye and coloboma of eyelids and ear abnormalities with or without deafness then we see the esophageal congenital anomaly in esophageal anomaly most common is the tracheoesophageal fistula the esophageal atresia with or without tracheoesophageal fistula is a life threatening surgical emergency in a newborn seen in 1 into 3000 to 5000 live birth and carries high mortality unless operated within 24 hours after birth other congenital malformation are present in 50% cases it is also a part of vectoral association that is vertebral abnormalities anorectal abnormalities cardiac tracheoesophageal fistula renal abnormalities radial abnormalities and the limb defect in this case of vectoral association tracheoesophageal fistula are a four type type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 clinically all cases except h type present within few hours of birth with persistent copious fine white frothy bubble of mucus in mouth so froth coming from mouth and the recurrent episodes of coughing and the recurrent episodes of coughing and the cyanosis and the choking at the time of feeding with the progressive respiratory distress due to 
एस्पिरेशन न्यूमोनिया प्रोग्रेसिव एब्डोमिनल डिस्टेंशन इन टाइप वन एंड स्कैफाइड एब्डोम इन टाइप टू एंड फोर दिस प्रैक्टिसबल फिस्टुला फेलियर और डिफिकल्टी टू पास दिस nasogastric tube in case of tracheoesophageal fistula most of these babies are a preterm and have, have a history of maternal pollen hydramnios due to impaired swallowing of amniotic fluid by fetus children with h type fistula are usually missed in a neonatal period and the present later with recurrent aspiration pneumonia and the diagnosis early diagnosis of esophageal atresia at tracheoesophageal fistula required high index of suspicion and a routine checkup for esophageal patency after birth which is confirmed by plain x ray chest and abdominal x ray after passing nasogastric tube with a radio opaque line to see the curled up tube suggestive of block esophageal passage and second presence of absence of gas shadow in stomach depending on the whether the lower end of the esophagus is connected with the trachea and presence or absence of aspiration pneumonia in case of h type fistula the radio contrast study there is a barium solo are either neither necessary nor safe with the risk of aspiration if necessary the water soluble iodine based contrast media may be used in a very small quantity less than 1 ml to outline fistula stress and should be withdrawn immediately after x-ray h type fistula is difficult to detect although milk scan bronchoscopy to see the tracheal end of the fistula and video esophagogram may be useful abdominal esg and other relevant investigation are necessary to exclude other associated abnormalities the treatment of this tracheoesophageal fistula that is esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula should be operated as early as possible at least within 24 hours of birth before the development of aspiration pneumonia before this surgery preoperative stabilization is required in tracheoesophageal fistula so preoperative stabilization of this case include nursing in prone position to reduce risk of aspiration continuous suction of upper esophageal pouch and the maintenance of temperature and and parenteral nutrition and prophylactic antibody and humidified oxygen and ventilatory support if necessary in case of tracheoesophageal fistula congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis it denotes narrowing gastric outlet due to unexplained thickening and hypertrophy of pylorus muscle primarily circular type so this congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis another name infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis is the commonest cause of gastric outlet obstruction 1/4 of into 1000 liver and more common in male it is 2.2 2 to 5 pyogen 1 and first born baby so it is 1/4 in 1000 live birth it is more common in male it is more common in first born baby 
and offspring of the parents, especially mother, with a history of infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. Clinically, this the idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric stenosis infantile usually manifest from second and the third week of neonatal life with recurrent projectile vomiting of curled milk after 20 to 30 minutes of feeding. So the projectile vomiting. Second, failure to thrive, dehydration and constipation due to persistent vomiting. And third, on abdominal examination, may reveal firm, movable, olive-shaped supra-umbilical lump on a right side, which can be rolled between fingers. So lump is better palpable from left side and immediately after feeding. And the visible peristalsis more on left side than the right, common after feed to overcome obstruction. So visible peristalsis, abdominal lump, failure to thrive, and projectile vomiting in case of congenital pyloric stenosis. Associated anomaly with congenital pyloric stenosis are a Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, tracheoesophageal fistula may be present. And obstructive jaundice may develop in 2% due to pressure of hypertrophied pylorus on ampulla of water. Diagnosis of this congenital pyloric stenosis rests on a typical appearance of pyloric lump supported by barium meal. There is a long and narrow pyloric canal. String sign, there is a passage of only a streak of barium. There is a string sign and the double track sign due to crowding of mucosal fold in a pyloric channel and shoulder sign due to bulging of pyloric muscles into antrum. So there are the three signs, string signs, double track signs and shoulder signs in case of congenital pyloric stenosis in barium mill study. USG showing target there is a dog nut sign due to hypertrophied ring of pyloric muscle around the ecogenic mucosa of pyloric muscle thickness is more than 30 mm and the length of pyloric channel more than 17 mm on USG is a pathognomy. So the dog nut sign is a pathognomic of congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis on USC. The treatment of this congenital pyloric stenosis, there is a preoperative management include nasogastric decompensation, correction of dehydration and electrolyte disturbance, and IV alimentation, and hypochloremic metabolic alkalosis occurs. So give intravenous fluids, and choice of therapy is surgery. There is Ramstead pyloromyotomy in case of congenital pyloric stenosis. Then small bowel malformation. Small bowel malformation are a leading cause of intestinal obstruction in newborn and young infant, though many of them present in a later life or remain asymptomatic throughout the life. So first, small bowel malformation is duodenal atresia. Duodenal atresia is rare, one into 10,000 live birth, but important defect and characterized by developmental failure of recalinization of duodenal lumen after solid phase of intestinal development and producing duodenal stenosis, atresia, or a mucosal wave in a duodenal lumen, usually at the site of papilla of water. 
and chromosomal abnormalities. Down syndrome are present in 25% case, while more than 30% have other gut, gut malformation. There is a malnutrition, esophageal atresia, anorectal anomalies, and congenital heart disease also associated with duodenal atresia. Half of these cases present or the baby is split up, also history of maternal polyadrenals in more than 50% case due to failure of absorption of amniotic fluid. Next. Clinically, this case present with 24 hour of birth with a bilious vomiting, gastric aspirate without abdominal distension, and visible peristaltic waves, usually in upper abdomen. And jaundice is present in one third case due to block of ampullar water. Diagnosis of these during the letter is a rest on X ray abdomen showing double bubble size, one air fluid level in a distended stomach, and other in a first part of distended duodenum. This is double bubble sign in duodenal atresia. And the rest of the gut has a no air shadow. Prenatal diagnosis is possible on sonography, while postnatal sonography is necessary before surgery to exclude other malformation and causes of duodenal obstruction. There is annular pancreas, peritoneal bands, volvulars. The management of this case in duodenal atresia, there is immediate duodeno, duodenostomy and duodeno jejunostomy is necessary in all cases after preoperative stabilization with nasogastric decompensation, fluid electrolyte correction, and exclusion of other malformation and postoperatively oral feed may be started after one week after disappearance of duodenal ileus. Jejuno ileal atresia is twice more common than duodenal atresia have been attributed to intrauterine infection or a vascular accident. So second M malformation is Jejuno ileal atresia. These defects are co-type clinically, and this defect invariably present in within 24 to 48 hours with the meconium ileus and acute intestinal obstruction and polyhydrobnos is present in 25% cases. The diagnosis of this Jejuno ileal atresia rest on a plain X-ray abdomen showing multiple fluid level, meconium ileus, there is a crown glass appearance in a right lower quadrant, and evidence of perforation. There is a gas under diaphragm, and the presence of peritoneal calcification suggests meconium peritonitis. Treatment of the jejunoduodenal atresia involved immediate surgical exploration with the resection anastomosis or a proximal jejunoileostomy after preoperative stabilization. Another malformation, there is a malnutrition and Hirschsprung disease, there is a congenital megacolon. Anorectal malformation. There's an ARMS, anorectal malformation, include group of heterogeneous developmental defect involving rectum and anal canal with absence, stenosis, and ectopic opening of anus and fistulous connection with urogenital tract. And this defect present in one in thousand live birth. This is anorectal malformation. Clinical spectrum of anorectal malformation, although many 
anorectal malformation, this incorporate anus are diagnosed at birth during routine check for an anal patency, and most of them are mixed in first 24 to 48 hours and present with failure to pass meconium, passage of meconium from abnormal site, there is urine and vagina, and gradual abdominal distension with the signs of intestinal obstruction. Rarely some malformation, there is anal stenosis present in older children with a chronic constipation and fecalomas. So local perineal examination may help to identify the type of the defect and the localized ectopic anal opening. While perineum is usually flat without median raphe and the anal dimple in a high type. So presence of median raphe and anal dimple indicates low and intermediate defect with relatively spread of spared splinteric mechanism and a better post-operative chance of continence. So these anorectal malformations are the three types. There's the high variety, low variety, and intermediate. So high anorectal malformations are frequently associated with sacrospinal deformities, more than 25%, and urogenital malformation, more than 50%, and other gut malformation, which should be extruded before surgery. So more than 20, this high anorectal malformation is frequent. The diagnosis of this anorectal malformation for associated neurological, spinal, and neurological problem associated with anorectal malformation. So important investigation in case of anorectal malformation. The first investigation is invertogram. Invertogram, which should be performed at least 12 hours after birth to allow intestinal gas to reach till most of the distal part of the rectal pouch. And baby is held ups and down. There's an inverted and a niche position for three minutes before the X-ray exposure. And the lo location of the gas shadow in a rectal pouch is then compared with a pubococcygeal and pubococcygeal light, representing levator anai muscle to differentiate between low variety and high variety anorectal malformation. When the rectal gas pouch in invertogram is more than one centimeter away from skin, patient probably has high or intermediate anorectal malformation. It needs initial colostomy before corrective surgery. USG is a better tool to differentiate between high and the low anorectal malformation as well as associated urological abnormality. A distance from rectal pouch to the perineum less than 10 mm indicate low imperforate anus, while the distance is more than 15 mm suggests high defect. So spinal canal may also be scanned by USG for a latent tethered cord during the first three months of life, though MRI is more reliable to diagnose these spinal malformations with this anorectal malformation. The treatment of this anorectal malformation, the choice of surgical procedure depends on the type of defect general condition of the patient and associated urological and neurospinal defect. So low, for, low malformation like simple incorporate anus may be managed with a single step anoplasty with a transpositioning of fistulous tract in a neonatal period followed by repeated anal dilatation till normal anal size is achieved. While in case of high or intermediate 
defect anorectal malformation it needs two step surgery there is a preliminary colotomy followed by definitive corrective repair after 6 to 12 months so corrective surgery involves pull through procedure to bring the colon below the level of levator and i for the continence to open it at expected anal site and to close the fistula strain so electrical muscle stimulation at a time of surgery help to identify the functional limit of the anal sphincter prognosis of anorectal malformation depends on the type of the defect and the coexisting defect the success rate for a fecal continence is excellent in a low variety defect and of anorectal malformation it is 80 to 90 percent prognosis good another moderate malformation anorectal there is a 50 to 60 percent then we see the congenital cns malformation congenital cns malformation account 5 to 10 percent of all major malformation in a live birth so most common is a neural tube defect neural tube defect ntd is a collective term for a broad spectrum of developmental defect due to defective fusion of neural tube ranging from asymptomatic spina bifida occulta to the most severe nn cephaly and encephalocele etiology of this cns malformation although some of the neural tube defect are a part of chromosomal disorder there is trisomy 13 patau syndrome isolated ntd are a multifactorial origin next dietary folate and folic acid also have a important role in a causation of neural tube defect folic acid deficiency during pregnancy important maternal risk factor for a neural tube defect there is folic acid deficiency severe maternal malnutrition alcohol abuse during pregnancy and radiation exposure during pregnancy result into ntd also in maternal diabetes anti conversion drugs valproate and carbamazepine during pregnancy result into ntd and clinical spectrum varies according to the type of this cns defect meningomyelocele meningomyelocele is a common age identified neural tube defect characterized by protrusion of meninges and the neural tissue remnant through the midline vertebral colon defect that the dystrophism with or without secondary neurological damage meningomyelocele posterior midline cyst translucent mass usually lumbo sacral region covered with thin layer of partially epithelialized tissue meningocele secondary neurological damage depending on the location of the lesion it lead to paraplegia with or without sensory damage or bladder or bowel involvement and associated abnormalities with meningomyelocele there is arnold chiari malformation with hydrocephalus genito urinary tract abnormalities and skeleton defect there is a club field and congenital dislocation of hip another cns malformation is meningocele meningocele is a mild variant in which herniated sac it contained only meninges not a neural tissue however associated abnormality that is syringomyelia diastomatomyelia tethered cord syndrome hydrocephalus are not uncommon and should be excluded by mri before surgery then encephalocele encephalocele is a cranial variant of meningocele characterized by 
herniation of meningeal cell with or without brain matter from occipital and frontal region and associated malformation include hydrocephalus, arnochiary malformation, and dandy walker seized. Anencephaly. Anencephaly is a most severe neural tube defect characterized by large defect in calvarium, meninges, and the skull with a rudimentary brain due to failure of closure of a rostral neuropore and primitive brain usually contain only residual brain stem without cerebellum, cerebrum, and other structure. And polyhydromis is common with anencephaly. And the child usually succumb in few days in case of anencephaly. And spina bifida occulta is a commonest this, this CNS malformation, though frequently miss neural tube defect characterized by midline defect in a vertebral body without protrusion of spinal content and usually at L5S1. And the presence of top top hair, dermal sinus, dislocation, discoloration, or lipoma over a spine indicate possibility of underlying spina bifida occulta. Presence of dermal sinus with spina bifida occulta may lead to recurrent meningitis. So diagnosis by neuroimaging of entire spine and brain to exclude hydrocephalus and the renal sonography to exclude congenital anomalies and the bladder dysfunction common in this spina bifida occulta. And MRI is indicated even in spina bifida occulta to exclude cord defect, that is syringomyelia, diastomatomyelia, and tethered cord syndrome. And the prenatal diagnosis by MTD, there is at 16 to 18 gestational week, there is an antenatal USG. So elevated alpha phytoprotein in a maternal serum, the sensitivity is 60 to 70 percent sensitivity to detect NTD. And elevated alpha phytoprotein in amniotic fluid at 16 to 18 gestational week, sensitive 100 percent sensitive to detect NTD. Management of this end neural tube defect depend on the severity of the defect, presence of secondary neurological deficit, and other congenital anomaly. Immediate at birth, open the defect should be covered with sterile wet gauze to prevent drying, cracking, and infection of covering tissue Till surgery arrange. CSF examination and antibiotic are indicated with a ruptured membrane of meningomyelosis with CSF leak or an infection in whom surgery should be deferred till CSF is sterile. Early surgical repair of defect within 24 to 4 to 8 hours of the birth, along with repetition in case of hydrocephalus is indicated in selective case of meningomyelosis. Outcome of this neural tube defect depends on presence of neurological deficit and hydrocephalus at the time of surgery. With early surgery in cases without neural deficit, prognosis good in case of neural tube defect. So how to prevent this neural tube defect? Prevention of neural tube defect is a major advance in prenatal therapeutics, which involve genetic counseling regarding risk of recurrence in future. So genetic counseling. Second, folic acid supplements, 5 mg per day from one month before the conception till the end of first trimester of pregnancy. And third, prenatal diagnosis by sonography and biochemical marker. So neural tube segmentation defect 
Thank you.